Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Lorgan111, and I am here in our learning command blocks world. At least I think I'm in the learning command blocks world. I seem to have gotten myself a little bit lost. I wonder how we can get back to spawn where all our command blocks are. Perhaps via this. Ooh, it's a sign that says teleport to spawn with spawn in red and bold. And if I right click the sign, Kazam! I've been teleported back to spawn. And so, as you might be able to guess, in today's episode, we are going to learn about such things. Specifically, we're going to learn about JSON data, the tell raw command, and clickable signs. So let's get started. First up, let's learn the very basics of the tell raw command, which allows us to put text in the chat. We already know one way that we can put text in the chat, and that's with the say command. I can say, hello world, and it prints my username in square brackets followed by hello world. Which is nice, but what if I don't want the my username with the square brackets? What if I just want to print exactly hello world into the chat? And for that, we can use the tell raw command. I'm going to say tell raw at a, a player selector. In this case, at a will be all the players in the world. And then I will put the text hello world in quotes and square brackets here. And that will put hello world in the chat, this time without my username in the front. And so that's the very basic syntax to get us started with tell raw, but there's a bit more to learn here. The syntax that the tell raw command uses is something called a JSON, J-S-O-N, JavaScript object notation. You can learn a whole lot more at json.org if you like to, but I am just going to try to quickly summarize the important bits that you need to know as it relates to Minecraft, uh, which I have here on the sign. I find the default signs in Minecraft to be very hard to read. If you get very far away, uh, the text gets really hard to read, partly as a result of the fact that it's on this wooden plank texture that has these kind of dark colored lines and speckles all in it. And so usually I hate resource packs and doing anything that's not completely vanilla. But for this right now, I'm going to actually do a little resource pack that I created that was easy to create because the only thing I change is the sign texture so that it has a completely white background just to make this text pop a little bit more. But in any case, let's take a look at the basic types of adjacent text that we need to know about as it relates to the tell raw command. And there are three things here. The first line is simply a string. Strings appear inside double quotes. And so quote string quote is how you do the string string. The second line is an array of adjacent objects. And basically an array has square brackets on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And inside of it is a list of things separated by commas. And so here we have an array with two elements. The first element is the string JSON, and the second element is the string array. And so that's what the second line is, an array of things. And the third line is a compound object, which is a list of key value pairs, a name and a value. And so we have name one colon value one, name two colon value two, and it's enclosed inside curly brackets. And that should look somewhat familiar. It's rather similar to the NBT data that we've seen in various Minecraft commands in the past. The main difference that being that everything that's a string has to be in Inside quotation marks. So even the names have to be inside quotation marks. But those are kind of like the three main essence of JSON kind of things that we need to know. So previously, I ran the command tell raw at a and then the array that contained one element, the string hello world, in order to print hello world. Uh, another way that I could do the same thing is to use a compound structure such as this. I can say text colon hello world, and actually spell it correctly. And that will also print hello world, uh, although a bit more long-windedly. And so when you have a compound object like this, if text is the name, then the value is just the string that you want to print. So then the next question you might ask is, why should I do it this more long-winded way when I could do it this shorter way? comparing these two with the array versus the compound. And the compound object has the advantage that you can add other features. So for example, I can add bold colon true comma, oops, I accidentally hit enter, color colon green. And if I run this, now it prints hello world, but it prints it in bold green text. 
And so basically what we've learned is these JSON compound objects have a variety of different fields that you can use to kind of change the presentation of the text. Things like bold and underline and strike through, as well as different colors. Another thing that we can do with Telraw that we haven't been able to do before is print scores to the chat. And so I happen to have a scoreboard objective set up right now. And so in the sidebar, I'm going to put score, where I have an objective named score. And currently, there's one player in it who's me, who has a particular score value of 111. And let's suppose I want to print that value out in the chat. I can do it with Telraw using a score of a particular value. And so score itself takes a compound, and that compound has a name, which can be the name of a player or a player selector, such as at p, which would get the nearest player, and an objective, which in this case is the name of the scoreboard objective, which in my case I've named capital score, like that. And so if I say tell raw at a score of name at p and objective score, boom, it prints 111 in the chat. And so that's another example of a JSON compound object that Minecraft knows how to translate into a particular bit of text. And now suppose I wanted to put that score like in a whole sentence, the way that Minecraft pr uh, prints out arrays of JSON text is it just prints out all the bits of text one by one. And so if I put this in array brackets, put square brackets around it, then I could put some other text over here, like I have score space. So the first element is just a string, I have score space. And then the second element is that same score selector thing that we just saw. And so if I do this, it prints out I have score 111. Very nice. And finally, one other modification to this command, rather than saying I have score, since it could refer to another player, we can use another JSON compound object that's going to be in curly braces right here. And in this case, the one I'm going to use is going to be selector colon, and then I'm going to give it a player selector at P. And so that's going to fill out my name at Lorgon111. And so it'll say Lorgon111 has score and then it's my score value. And so if I print that out, Lorgon111 has score 111. And so once again, that was tell raw. At A, we had an array. In this case, the array has three elements. The first one is this compound object, selector, at P. The second one is just a string, has score. And the third one is this big compound object, score, whose value is another compound object, name at P, and objective score. And so that prints out the text, Lorgon111 has score 111. And so as a result, there's a number of other different compound object name value pairs that you can use that Minecraft knows how to do interesting things with. You can check out the Minecraft wiki for commands to learn the fine details of that. But those are some of the main ones that we'll want to use today. Actually, I just lied to you. I left out perhaps the most important thing that we need to learn, which is clickable text. And so if I start out with just tell raw at a text of click, it just puts the word click on the screen. But if I want to make that word actually clickable, I can do so like this. I can say click event with a lowercase c and a capital E colon. And click event is going to take another adjacent compound object that is going to have action as a name and run underscore command as a value. And then a value, the string value as a name. And the command I want to run, which in this case I'll do slash say hi as its value. And so if I do all of that, once again, it prints the word click in the chat. But this time, if I press T to open up the chat and move my mouse cursor over here and click on the word click, boom, I say hi. And so every time I click the word click here in the chat, it is going to tell me to say hi. And so we're running a command every time someone clicks a word in the chat. Once again, the command that I just used is tell raw at a text of click, click event is a compound object, action of run command, and value of say hi. So that is how we make clickable text. Next up, let's learn about signs. 
I have a command I'm going to paste into this command block, and we'll take a look at it in more detail in just a moment. But if I go ahead and run this command, it is going to place a sign here, and the sign, signs always have four lines of text, and in this case the four lines of text are just one, two, three, and four. And so if we take a look at this command, set block tilde two, tilde one, tilde standing sign zero, tilde two is two blocks over this waist, tilde one is one block up into the sky, uh, standing sign zero, there's both standing signs and wall signs. Wall signs are when you place a sign against a wall like that, and standing signs are when you place a sign on the ground like that. And when you place the signs down, they can have kind of different orientations in terms of the direction that they're facing. And so in this command, standing sign zero, zero is just kind of facing to the south, which is kind of like the default orientation. And then, you know, you can do, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, as all the different rotations of the way that the sign could be facing. And then finally, we're going to replace uh, that block with set block, and we're going to give it some block entity data. In this case, the four lines of the sign are called text1, text2, text3, text4, and they take strings, which are the string of text that goes in the signs. And so in this case, I've got the string1, the string2, the string3, and the string4. And that is how we wind up with a sign that says 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's the basic syntax for signs. Now it turns out that signs can also accept JSON text. Here I'm starting a sign that just has one line, that's text1, that says blah. And so if I do that, I end up with a sign that says blah, which is very nice. But it turns out that I can put some JSON text in here. And so you might think, based on what we've just learned, that I could say text colon blah, like that, in order to put some JSON text in the sign. But if I try running this, it will fail. If we read the uh, previous output, data tag parsing failed, unexpected token t at text, blah, right. And so what happens here is JSON text uses double quotes to quote strings, but it's already the case that we're using double quote to quote this whole bit that is the value of the text one name. And so when we want to use double quotes inside a double quoted string, we need to escape them by putting a backslash in front. And so basically that means I need to put four backslashes in here, like so. So now text one is the string, curly brace, an escaped double quote, text, an escaped double quote, colon, an escaped quote, blah, an escaped quote, curly brace, and then the quote that actually ends the text one. And if I do this, let me actually change it from blah to some other text. Hello, just so that we know when it's working. And so if I run this command, boom, now it says hello. And so basically we've just proven that we can put some JSON text inside the text of the different lines of a sign. But in the process of doing so, we need to escape all of the quotation marks by putting a backslash in front of them. And so moving on to a fresh command block over here, I have exactly the same command as before, but just like with tell raw, when we use JSON compound objects with text, we can also add some other features. So I can make it bold and in green by saying comma backslash quote bold backslash quote colon backslash quote true backslash quote comma backslash quote color, backslash quote colon, backslash quote green, backslash quote, just like that. And now, assuming I have not screwed up the syntax, we end up with hello, but this time it's bold and in green. And so basically we do the exact same thing that we did with the corresponding tell raw command, except for all of the quotation marks have been replaced with backslash, backslash quotation marks. And finally, moving on to yet another command block over here. I've placed the command in here already, because if I try to type this on camera, I'm sure I'm going to screw it up. 
but the text is blah, the click event, which we saw in tell raw, but now it's inside a sign, has an action of run command and a value of say hi with lots of slashes and backslashes and quotation marks and colons everywhere. When you try to do this, you are going to screw up the syntax. Uh, my suggestion is probably to use a separate text editor like Notepad and make sure that you can see all the text and get the command correct and then go and paste it into a command block in order to do it. But if I do this, I will create a sign that says blah, but it has a click event. And so if I right click on the sign, boom, hi, gets printed in the chat. And I can right click it again. Hi, 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 hi. And so each time I right click this sign, it is going to run a command. But furthermore, the command that we ran was slash say hi. And you'll notice it prints in the chat Lorgan111 hi, which is to say the person who right clicks the sign is kind of the person who is executing the command. And that's important because if I just had a command block that said say hi, and I, for example, put a button on that command block like so, and then press the button, it's the command block itself that says hi. And if you want to know, there's no way to know with a command block and someone pressing a button, like who pressed the button. You could use entity selectors like at P to get like the nearest person. Uh, but if I was standing way back here and I pressed the button and someone else was standing right here, it would grab this person rather than the person who pressed the button because command blocks don't know who activated their redstone. But in the case of signs, if you right click on the sign, the person who clicks the sign is the person kind of executing the command. And so that gives us a way to run commands specific to the players who activated them. And since a lot of commands need player selectors, just as another example, let me change the command here to scoreboard players add at p score one. And so note the scoreboard display on the right-hand side of the screen says score Lorgan 111 has 111. If I actually run this command to replace the sign and then right-click on the sign, now Lorgan 111 has 112, Lorgan 111 has 113. Each time I click on it, it adds one to my score. And so the at P here refers to the player who actually clicked the sign. So now let's summarize what we've learned today. We learned the basic tell raw command, and we learned that it accepts data in JSON format, and we learned about the basics of JSON and how JSON works, that you can have strings that are double quoted, you can have arrays of things in square brackets, and you can have compound objects in curly braces where both the names and the values, if they're strings, have quotes around them. And then we learned how to use things like tell raw to have text that has different font characteristics such as bold and color in order to get color bolded text in the chat. We also learned how you could print out scores by using things like selectors and score with a particular name and objective in order to print out stuff in the chat related to player scores. And finally, we learned how you could make clickable events, either clickable words in the chat or clicks on signs that run a command by using click event, action run command, and a value of a particular command we wanted to run. That then we could either click in the chat by running them that way, or click by right clicking on a sign in order to have uh, some action take place as well. And I guess this is one of the broken signs that wasn't actually doing anything because I hadn't done click events until I came over here. Right, which is actually adding one to my score. Great. And there's a whole lot more that you can learn. Once again, in the description of this video, I'll have a link to the wiki where you can learn about more of the JSON data that gets interpreted by the tell raw command and by signs in Minecraft, as well as we didn't get into it in this episode, and I don't know that I'll necessarily go into it, but written books. You can also put text in that then has clickable text that can run commands. But all of these things are useful. The one that's going to be most useful, and the reason I decided to do this episode, is the one that has scores and selectors, because being able to print out scores in the chat is going to be important for something that I want to do in the future. So definitely remember that to come back to. But for now, I will leave you guys off and say that I hope you learned something. I hope that you guys are having a great day, and I will see you again soon with more Learning Command Blocks.
Bye bye. But wait, there's more! As always, some bonus content at the end of the episode where I talk about lies or omissions that I had during this episode that didn't fit into the main episode content. And there's a couple of main ones that I can think of. One is when we are doing things like clickable text in the chat where the person can click on it and it runs a command, uh, it will run the command with that user's permissions. And so, for example, if I do something like set block, oops, set block, uh, do I have enough space to do it on this command line? Tilde, tilde, tilde one wool, if that fits. And then I click this, block placed. Okay, so it just tried to place some block or place some wool just behind it, just behind me. And if I run it again, I'll do that. Set block is a command that you can only run if you're opt. And so if you were to try this on a server and try to give this text to everyone on the server and let them click it, only the people who were uh, opt on the server would actually be able to do the set block that would then run the command to do this. There are ways to kind of get around that restriction to let players click on text and run uh, arbitrary kind of other redstone commands using the trigger command. And I'm not going to go into detail about that, but basically if you run into that where some clickable things aren't working for other players, it's probably because you're not in single player, you're uh, on a server, and those players aren't in creative mode or aren't opt or don't have permissions to run those commands. So that's one important omission. The other main omission is when talking about the contents of the strings and what characters can appear in those strings. Uh, you can use a variety of Unicode characters to make some interesting characters and to do some interesting other things in Minecraft. I don't know about and don't care about kind of all the fine details of that, uh, but if you want to learn more, there's crazy things that you can do with Unicode characters inside these JSON data structures as well. And with that, that's where I will really end things for today. My hunch is for the next episode, we're going to kind of do some reviewing because we've learned a lot over the past nine episodes or so. And so I want to kind of like review and summarize and go into a bit more detail about some of the things that we've learned more about over time. And yeah, I also want to go into a little bit more detail about kind of like command block timing and the order that different commands run. I think that's what I'm going to do next episode, but you'll have to stay subscribed and watch to find out. I hope as always you guys are having a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye!